Let's try that. I've been having to fanny around with the um, my uh, with my camera positioning because the, the light. You wouldn't think that the windows were wide open, would you? But they are. The sun's beaming. So it makes a change to have the sun beaming down. But I'm in the I'm in the shadowy bit. <laughs> And except so, but oh Jesus Christ! Talk, talk English. Um, but when the sun comes around, it's going to be. I'm going to go from being the shadowy bit to being in this like the beaming sun bit. And it's going to be. It's going. To, I'm going to go from gloom to dazzling. Not personally. That I doubt I'll ever be. No. <laughs> yeah, this is a pickups video. Um, I've noticed in recent recent videos, I often go, I wasn't going to do this one, I wasn't going to do a pickups video now, but... But then, you know, I'm offering up all the excuses, and now the sun's going in. It's alright when it goes behind a cloud, you wouldn't think of that, that's it, yeah. There's more light now, the sun's gone behind a cloud, bizarre. Um, uh, no, in recent pickups videos, I've, I've made excuses. You know, apologising for making a pickups video. Who am I apologising to? <laughs> I know there's a sort of a, a certain snobbery a, a sort of surrounding pickups videos, you know, um, a certain sort of misplaced anger. <coughs> Darren, um, but <laughs> Darren, that's better. That one, second one was better. Um, but you know, this, this is my roots. I'm staying true to my roots. I've, I've started doing pickups videos. I'll probably go to my grave from doing pickups videos, watching and watching pickups videos. I don't know. I think I'm probably I'm one of the, the the only people who hasn't graduated graduated onto something else. Most people they start off doing pickups videos because they're accessible, and then people move on to something else. Don't they? Not me. I, I'm I'm here to the bitter end. But. <laughs> Not, not, not that I'm going to continue buying video games. There, there, there is a cut-off point because uh, you know um, I've been actually looking at my PS1 and my PS2 collection. They're both coming to a natural end. And it's, it won't be long now until I, until I think I've got everything that I that I wanted. I mean, I, I've not got a massive collection of both, but they, they, they are my the collections that are most important to me. And um, you know. There'll be a, the, the time's coming when I, I won't be buying any more PS1, PS2 games. I won't be getting rid of any either, but I, they're, 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 I've got all the games I ever wanted to play. So, and that's the, sort of the ultimate aim. But, um, and what's the point in, you know, what's the point in people, oh jeez, don't, don't start this. <laughs> God, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I must be, I'm not belittling anybody who genuinely is, but I'm sure there's a certain element of schizophrenia to my, in my brain. Because I, I can have conversations with myself quite easily, full-on sort of two-sided debates. But <laughs> now I've this is actually the third shot I've had of making this. The first two, I don't know, they're a bit gloomy, a bit miserable. The first one in particular, it showed. I was talking. I spoke about a game. It was a particular, a particularly important game that I wanted. But I ended up speaking about it for 10 minutes, and it was the second game I'd showed. And in the original version, the original cut, it was like 19 minutes, and bearing in mind it was a pickups video, and I'd shown two games. It's ridiculous. But I can't even remember what I was talking about now. Was, there were certain things I wanted to say. That's my problem, really. I have things I really wanted to get out. I really want to say, you know, sort of like desperate to. But Anyway, um, something I do need to say though is that I just want to give a shout out to um, to the Ryan Shand. Um, he's uh, if you, if you've not seen his channel, he's been around a few months, I think. I've been watching these videos for about a month, I think, and he's he's a really good lad. He's a really good lad. He's a sort of he's got a sort of channel that if you don't like if you know about it, you'd subscribe to because he he does what we all do, and he, he's he's um, he's part of the, the, old, the same school as me, where he sort of buys games across the, across the, the board, which is, I always like um, a bit of variation. Um, 
But um, he's, yeah, he's the sort of channel if you know about him, you just subscribe to him because he's a, he's a really decent lad and uh, his videos are always entertaining. He buys some really good stuff, he's got a nice collection and um, it's nice to have one, someone from, who's not from the East Midlands for once because <laughs> you fuckers are everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> but that's true, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, what is it? What is it with sort of video game collectors in the East Midlands? I don't know what it is. Well, the Midlands in general. I don't know. I'm not that one trying. I'm not that I'm aiming to kick off, <laughs> start a fight or anything. But it's all in good fun. Yeah, Ryan Shand. Go and check out his channel because I think I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, oh, I'm always entertained by his videos. He started off making um, sort of not being on camera. And I think um, since he's sort of graduated in front of the camera, um, I think he's sort of kicked on. You know, he's kicked on, and, and um, he's a, a, a really genuine lad, and I think really likable, really likable on screen persona. And I think, um, I think if you like my videos, you definitely get a kick out of these. You know, so go and check him out because I think um, sort of but being around, I, I can't remember how many subscribers he's got, but um, he's, he's, I think he's sort of on that sort of hump. Yeah, we all get to a hump before you've really sort of kicked on. And I think um, it needs to go, like, it needs just a bit of help to go over the hump and then you can sort of kick on and then, you know. But he's got a brilliant channel anyway, so go and check it out. But anyway, so right, the Ryan Shand, he's a good lad. He's, the link to his channel will be in the description box below. So, yeah. The thing about stat sitting here is that I can't, I don't know how long I've been talking for. Six, nearly seven minutes. <laughs> I'm trying to get in. So look, there's the sun, and there's me, and there's the sun. I can, I, thing is, with all this shit in this room, it's difficult to position the camera. I really need to be as close to the window as possible. But look, I'm right on the borderline here. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to give up in a minute. <laughs> um, these pickups aren't in. Uh, the first four aren't in order, this is all reverse order. I generally, I generally go by chronological order of the oldest first. But um, these ones are the newest, and this one, actually one, is the newest. Um, it's a bit out of the ordinary for me. I, I've been watching, um, I always get a kick out of people who play, um, watching people play um, PC games, um, it's not strategy games, I'm, it's almost out of envy and jealousy that I can't do it, and I, but I just find them really entertaining. I thought it's it's just about you know it's about time I really give it a shot myself. And I've bought this game; it's only cheap in a charity shop. I bought it. I'm not convinced it's going to work on my computer. <laughs> I thought I sort of look at this. I looked at the system requirements and thought, yeah, that'll work. But then having read reviews since, um, I've got a feeling it won't because um, the reviews spoke about having a sort of a beefy setup, and I haven't got a beefy setup in certain respects. In other respects, I have got a beefy set up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought, I thought these, my first two attempts at making this video were like miserable. I think I've just sort of turned the corner. I don't know. It's uh, Medieval 2 um, Total War. Gold edition, £2 from a charity shop. Um, it looks really good fun. I've, I can sit and watch videos, other people playing videos of this, just like constantly. It looks brilliant. I just, and I'm just, I would love it if um, my computer would run it, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure what my <laughs> what hardware my system has. It's, it's probably verging. It's probably sort of verging on minimum system requirements, if not less so. But no, I mean, I've really wanted to give this a shot, and I've never, never. Given RTS is a proper shot, because I'm a, because I'm a chicken, I'm a coward, and it, it's just gonna. I I'm, no, I'm just gonna. No, I don't know. I suspect I'm gonna get to a point where I am just sort of like, oh, I can't do it, in panic, and then just you know, give up. But anyway, um, so that was two quid, and if not, I'll just have to trade it straight in to CX, which is a shame, but. Um, my, my computer's running a bit slow at the moment, I think it's for that bullshit, or not bullshit, those um, creative packages I'd put on it, 
I tried to. They don't run very well. Tried to um, a while back, but well, they're taking up about half the hard drive. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, yeah, going back to Ryan Shands, we uh, and a few other people actually have uh, spoken about um, what sort of things you do and you don't see generally in charity shops and. There's sort of the certain older brand of games, if you see them, generally, or my automatic reaction is to, is to say, oh, well, I'm going to have to buy that. But then, and then um, you know, then the, you sort of, the, not the self-editing process, but the self-control process kicks in. And then you have to be more discriminate, generally. And I um, I uh, saw some Mega Drive games in a, in a charity shop, and I think it was me and Ryan Shand and uh, a few other people just mentioned how he... Don't often see Mega Drive games in charity shops, and I saw there was a, I think it was about eleven. And there was like Sonic One and Two, as apart from the ones that I picked up, Sonic One, Two, Altered Beast, um, Batman, Batman Returns. I, I thought about getting Batman Returns, but I, then I worked out that it's not the same as the SNES one, so I left it. Um, but I think I've got the ones that um, that are half decent anyway. I only got three, and they were ninety nine p each. And like I said, I've actually, um, no, I haven't, I haven't showed these yet, have I? But I'll get them out anyway. Street of Rage. See, look, the sun's coming out now. If I see, I'm a bit closer to the window, so I'll get a bit of... Street of Rage. Um, I had to get this. I don't actually have it. I've got the um, the one, the version on the, the Mega Drive, the Ultimate Mega Drive, Mega, the Mega Drive collection on the 360. But... Um, uh, I really, really wanted to get this because um, it was the first ever Mega Drive game I had. I had this. So now, look, now the game's in the light and I'm in the shade. So if I do that, I can use it as a sort of. <laughs> but anyway, I'll do that. I'll do that time. But yeah, it was the it's the first it was the first ever Mega Drive game I had. Before I had the system, I bought it. I think it was a present. I can remember where I got it from. It was called Shikana Computers. It's in wood green, but it's now um, it's not a cost cutter, but it's like a, a mini market. You know, it's, uh, it's quite a shame, really, because it was it was. Um, I can remember they used to sell like sort of um, abstract games and stuff like that. And then I graduated onto the Mega Drive, and um, I actually prefer this. I know it's not many people's favourites of the of the three. I prefer this number two. Just because of the challenge, I think it's more challenging, and um, and also the nostalgia, because like I said, it was the first game I ever had. And, um, uh, what else? Um, sorry. Ninety nine English pence. Ninety nine pence. Um, Road Rash. They're all in good nick, by the way. Road Rash. Um, this is another one I've got nostalgia for. I don't think I ever owned it, but I, I borrowed it from someone. I can't remember who I borrowed it from. I got a feeling it might be this kid at school called George Agrotis. I think I borrowed it from him. I had it for months or years even, I think. But so I had it for a long time and, and I played it a lot. Really enjoyed it. Oh well, actually to be honest, I'm not sure it was this one or number two. Could it even be number three? I had one of them. But I I can remember I was when I was fifteen, my sister's older than me, she's two and a half years older than me, and she had her eighteenth birthday. And my, my parents went away for the weekend, and um, I, I, I stayed around for a party. She had a proper house party. It was proper sort of like kids getting trashed and sort of yakking up in the sort of in the hall stuff like that party. And I was a bit, you know, I was younger. I was younger than anyone there, and I was allowed. I had some friends over, and um, we were a bit like a bit shy, so we sort of hid in my bedroom, and we, we just played road rash all night. <laughs> And I think that I think that's this W yeah. It's a really old W. H. Smith's uh price sticker. That actually looks reversed. I never realised that the viewfinder on my camera was reversed. Because that doesn't that's sort of three ninety from my perspective that's thirty nine ninety nine reversed. That was ninety nine P as well. So like, the only downside, it's a bit tired, but um you see along the bottom, it's a bit like chewed. I hate it when the sleeve slips out and it's sort of hanging out there, and sort of the or, or slips up, and the sort of the bottom gets chewed. But this is the only one that seems slightly worse, Nick. It's missing a clip inside, but 
that's just a minor thing. So those two games I've got a lot, a lot of nostalgia for, and the third one I got um, is the Revenge of Shinobi. Now I've got I couldn't remember whether I had this or whether I had um, um, Shadow Dancer, and it was only ninety nine p. I thought I don't want a duplicate. I'm sick of buying duplicates, and you know not really having a use for them. But I, I sort of took a punt because it was 99p anyway, and it turns out this wasn't the one I had. I, it was Shadow Dance that I already had. I should know what I've got, but <laughs> in this instance, when things like Tomb Raider, I've made that mistake in the past. In this instance, when they're sort of quite similar, um, you know, uh, it's it's difficult to remember, so to speak. I'm making excuses, but anyway. Um, I thought this was the one that um, Pete did. Uh, a gameplay video a while back because it looked really good, but I think that was actually Shinobi 3. But I mean, it looks brilliant anyway. It's just um, I've not actually played it yet. I was gonna. Shall I read out the back? No, I was gonna. I'll read out the Spanish one. <laughs> In Spanish. Usted es Musashi, el ninja maestro. Usted es, es el jefe ninja. Usted es uno de los guerreros místicos. Que lo y saben todo. Usted el motefero puede destruir el maligno ejército de Neo Zid. <laughs> si falla, Ayoko supera, supera prisionera morirá. I think that means um, their brutal prisoner dies. But anyway, I don't, know, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Again, that was 99p. Um, so that, those ones are all out of order. These ones that were in the original, um, in, the, in the original two versions of my uh, oh, pickups video. Oh, 17 minutes. Bollocks. Right, this is going to be speedy. Um, first three games are all pick, uh, post Christmas um, eBay purchases. Um, uh, there were sort of a, um, three games I wanted, but it was actually. Um, the actual experiences were a mixed bag. Um, the first one, I'll get it out, um, it's supposed to be a really good game. It's a late, um, it's Road Trooper, it was a late Xbox release in 2006. It's supposed to be really good. The reviews say it's, um, the game itself is good, but um, it's short. I don't know whether it's easy to complete in that sense, but the game is short. So, and so they obviously the reviews say that generally that it's um, paying full whack, full retail for this isn't isn't ideal. I got this. It's quite collectible, not too, not so collectible. Although the seller actually tried to make out it was more collectible than it was, because we had we had a bit of a beef afterwards. Um, I paid three something with two forty nine. I think it's three quid exactly with two forty nine on top. And it's actually all right. The only downside is a bit of a crimp on there, that's the thing, on the case. But um, it's in really nice nick. But then um, the, the seller only spent. I think I've mentioned this in a recent video. The seller only spent one pound ten on postage with a, a shitty um, standard envelope. And I, I just that pissed me off, as it normally does. <laughs> and um, so I uh, I messaged them asking if there was like a a token refund in the offing. They said no and tried to and tried to say, oh, it didn't make as much as I thought it was going to. It's quite a rare game. All well, that bollocks. And so um, I just gave them a neutral and left it at that. But and then we have a bit of a backwards and forwards about you know they they sent me all this. I think I mentioned they sent me all this stuff about how um, about how much a seller pays and they sent me this something they'd cut. Cut and pasted off the uh, um, the uh, eBay sellers sort of guide, you know, breakdown of, of costs, so to speak. But not that they were really, they were relevant to them. But um, it's supposed to be really good. It's like a third person shooter, and um, I have since I've forgotten who it was who recommended it. Since then, I've checked out quite a lot of um, gameplay videos and reviews, and um, it's definitely something that I wanted to nab. But obviously, obviously at a lower price because it's supposed to be quite relatively short. Um, the second game I got was um, Jumping Flash, but it was manky. 
I think I've still got a version of the, vi the original video I made because it was quite funny when I first saw it because I wanted to, all the games came on the same time, at the same time, the same day and I wanted to make a video because I've not done an unpackaging in a while, you know, like a, an eBay unpackaging. Because I think I st that's pretty much how I, why I started watching videos, people like, um, people like Lefarious sort of getting stuff off eBay. And um, now the sun's coming round. <laughs> It's off. It's the bane of my life. You think the weird thing is, if I um, if I uh, close the curtains, it will look brighter because the curtains will diffuse the sunlight. I can't really see how dark it actually is. But anyway, um, no. I, I, when I first started on on um, YouTube, I was watching people doing unboxings and stuff, not necessarily pickups videos. Because pickups videos were, were a bizarre thing. But now they make sense. But for some reason, the unboxings, sort of like packaging videos, unpackaging videos, were, were quite exciting. And I thought, I, I've not done one of those in a long time. I've got these three packages. I'll make a video. And it was a mixed bag. Obviously, that one was. And then the second one was Jumping Flash. And it was not in a very good condition. And I think I'll stick an, uh, a piece of footage to demonstrate sort of that. I'll do that now. At 21, 22 minutes, 22 seconds. And then you, now we're back in the room. Anyway, um, so that was brilliant, wasn't it? It was disgusting. <laughs> like someone had wiped their, wiped their arse on it. I'm guessing it was tea, but it was very dark tea, like builder's tea. Tea that needed some milk in it. But the, um, the third game in the, in, the, in the set of three that I got, um, in the original video, this is the one that I spoke too long about. And um, so it took, a ma it took about 10 minutes to watch this one game. It's Sweet Code in Tear Christ. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's fairly more and more like a Sweet Code game because I'm actually playing at the moment. I'm about 30 hours. I won't speak about it now, but. Um, so that. There you go. I won't speak about it now. So jogger go past in a beanie hat. Um, but I paid twenty nine ninety nine for it, which is a decent price actually. I'll buy it now on eBay, and it came in good price, in good time. Um, the uh, the seller didn't overcharge me for postage. It was well packaged, and so I didn't have any problems. It's just you know, it's nice when they don't try and scrimp just to save themselves some money. But um, I might, I think, I'm thinking of doing a dedicated video to this. But uh, I think I will actually because I'm, there's quite a lot I want to say about it. And all these next ones are all purchases in the wild. Yeah. Um, there's a sort of bit of a theme running through these, actually. I'm going to have to whiz through them because, I, again, it's the video's getting too long. But um, and with that extra bit, it's going to be even longer. Um, yeah, there's a theme you might notice there's this theme. first one is uh, Blue Dragon Plus. It's a strategy RPG. Um, it's on my list or not. It's not on my list anymore because I've now... Uh, scrubbed it off because I've got it as you would um, it's got a decent reputation it's uh, Blue Dragon it's, it uses the um, I always forget the name of the artist who did um, like Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that well, I've got I've got Blue Dragon on the 360 I'm, I'm assuming this is from the same universe I don't really know but it's a uh, well, it says real time actually so they're not oh that's interesting I thought it was turn based Oh, okay. That shows how much I know, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm not sure it's from the same universe as the 360 game. But it's supposed to be pretty good. And it looks pretty good. I, I, I try to not to base base my choices on the back of boxes, because that's a classic mistake. But, you know, I have been known to do that in the past. Um, uh, a game I knew more about is um, Dragon Quest VI. Uh, sorry, that was that was four pound from CEX, which is a decent price actually. This was uh, six pound from CEX. Um, this sort of disappeared from from the CEX stock list after Christmas when there was like the big cull of like of uh, Wii games and DS games from like parents who were a bit desperate to buy something for their. At least that's in the light, rather than well, I'm not. You know, a big colour of all those games from 
parents who are desperate to buy their kids something for Christmas. But then um, I saw one, I saw one on uh, in a local CX on their stop list, and I had to go nab it because it was only six quid, and that's a decent price for this. I think on eBay, it's probably round about that. Um, there's one of there's one that I think I've got, there's one I've actually got, which is more difficult to get hold of and reaches a decent price. But this one's this one was released in good numbers. And it's a sort of Dragon Quest game, and it's it's an RPG, and it's my sort of game, and I am um, I will pay any RPG, and no matter how um, how run of the mill it is. I mean, I've mentioned that to Pete recently. It's something about the sort of the style and the sort of the music, it's, RPG music, it always tends to like resonate with me. The style of the game, turn based turn based battles, and sort of the whole existing in a game really appeals to me. I was thinking actually, like, having put 30 odd hours into Sweet Coden, I mean, I'm, I'm, I almost feel sorry for people who don't like RPGs because they'll never, they'll never um, really know what it's like to invest that amount of time into a game and it's, it's a good thing. I mean, it's not necessarily a good thing in terms of, sort of greater productivity. <laughs> if you've got spare time, it's a good thing, it is a definitely a good thing. Sticking to the fucking table, but um, now you can see me better now. Now the, the sun's gone behind the clouds. Um, right, another DS game. This one was a no-brainer. That was six. Did I tell you that was six quid. Yeah, this was uh, nine ninety-nine, but I got a pound off, so it was eight ninety-nine because I had some credit from game. This is sort of a no-brainer. I do actually have this as a duplicate. This is in better nick than mine, so I had to nab it, and it was. Eight ninety nine. This is that's a very very good price for that. I don't know why it was that sort of. Normally they sort of charge slightly too much, but I don't think they really have a handle on what's good value for DS games. I think they're they're more aware in in game game station or in the game now of of value for three sixty and PS three games, but DS games not so much. But um, it's, I think, it's a remake of the original one, because I've not actually played my version yet, because I've, I've actually been playing through the GBA version, because I did a review of it in um, that, the, re the review I wrote. But, um, no, this is a bit of a no-brainer, because when I, when I was looking out for my, the old copy, it took me donkey's years to get hold of, and so it's really got my tits. And um, I know how difficult it was to get hold of, and it was almost an automatic reaction to, to, to nab it, you know. And obviously it's better than mine, I'll just sort of probably sell my old one on. But um, These next two, uh, I've got actually um, Dan Carboot Game to, to thank for these, for making me aware. I was living in ignorance until he, um, until he mentioned something to me. Um, he mentioned to me a game in, in my, my video about um, the Kevin and Perry soundtrack. Um, he mentioned a certain two games to me, and how they've gone a bit mental on eBay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that work. That will work. That will work. That work. Now I'm in the sun. Now the sun's gone beyond clouds. It's not playing ball today. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned these two games to me. And I said to him, no word of a lie, genuinely, I have seen these in a charity shop earlier because they're PC games. And they're a PC version of um, a 360 game that I've sort of had my eye on, but it's a style of game oh, that I've actually shown already. A style of game that it's one of those things where I really want to be good at it, but I know for well I'll be an absolute failure. But the content and the um, sort of like the game, the sort of the the world it's from, is something that really appealed to me. It's um, uh, Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the PC. This is actually a collector's edition, and this is, there is a North Standard edition, but the price of these has gone mental on eBay. You don't really know why. I'm guessing it's something to do with the, um, something to do with the Hobbit film, but um, it's got all its bits in it. There, there are a lot of extras in it, but um, no, I was looking out for the 360 version. I was never going to pay too much for it because, um, because, like I said, it was more of a gamble because of the style of game. Because RTSs, I'm a bit, bit of a noob, bit of a, you know, bit of a no hoper. 
So I never really wanted to pay too much for it. It's just something like, in my head, I should enjoy them. It's something I really need to work at. Um, again, I'm not sure this will run on my um, run on my 360. So again, it, it might be I might have to ship it ship it out straight away. But um, looking at the system requirements, it, it might be a close run thing, like uh, like with um, Medieval 2. It might be a close run thing, but I'm more hopeful of this one actually. But if not, it's no bad thing because I can sell it straight on because they've gone mental. This is about 20, 20, sorry, 25, 30 quid on eBay, and this cost me three quid in a charity shop. So it's got a nice, it's got a slip case right, and all its bits. Um, this one is the expansion pack, Wrath of the Witch King. Sorry, right, uh, Rise of the Witch King. This one's about 35, 40 quid for some reason. No idea why. This cost me one pound fifty. And I've got Dan uh, Dan Carby Gaiman to, to to thank for those. So for making me aware, you know, like um, relieving me of my ignorance. So I'm chuffed with those, um, and I, I'm definitely going to give them a shot. I'm, I really want to really want to be good at them because <laughs> I've really been in a sort of a, a mood to play a, a Lord of the Rings game. Thirty-one minutes, shit, um, but. You know, and and looking, like I said, w watching them, I, I find them like mesmeric. Watching people who are really good at RTSs and know what they're doing, I find them really entertaining. But and I and I want to, if I'm entertained by watching them, I I really want to get good at them. It's just, I don't know, spinning plates. I like turn based, turn based. Where I can sit down, you know, because my my brain sometimes doesn't work as fast as it should. Last three games. Um, I've already shown a, uh, one of this in this range of games. It's um, it's another DS game. It's Dragon Quest IX, and like the other one, it's it's my sort of game. So this is a no-brainer. And again, this was uh, six pound from CEX, and this was released in massive numbers. It's everywhere. You can even still get it in Sainsbury's, but they're just charging too much for it. Get it new in Sainsbury's, but um, again, it's uh, it's my sort of game. It's a, it's an RPG, and I'll play an RPG no matter how run of the mill it is. And Dragon Quest games aren't run of the mill, so it's a bit of a no brainer. This uh, they're all on my list, by the way, apart from maybe um, uh, Lord of the Rings. Well, the 360 version was. Um, another game that's on my list and more difficult to get hold of than uh, Dragon Quest is a uh, Luminous Arc Two. Comes in a nice little cardboard box with a CD soundtrack. And this is a, another turn-based strategy RPG uh, with the same people who do the artwork from like Discar and those sorts of games. And it's supposed to be decent, actually. It's a rising style game. Um, I got this at the same time as I got Dragon Quest. Uh, Dragon Quest, yeah, Dragon Quest was six quid. This was eight. I've, I've gone a bit on a bit of a post-Christmas binge because I can sort of afford games I've, I've wanted for a while. So I, I tend to generally it happens every year generally. But. It's supposed to be a decent game actually. It's, this is about sort of 70 75 percent on reviews. So um, I've, I've, I've yet to try it, so I don't know if it's got anything that sort of differs from the norm. But um, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed strategy RPGs ever since I played uh, Vandal Hearts on the PS1 and Vandal Hearts 2 because they were the first two. I got a bit frustrated that um, um, Final Fantasy Tactics never made it to the PS1, but I've got that on. Um, yeah, I've got it on DS now, so. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this one, finally, this is the last game. This is just. It's a bit of a no brainer, this one. This is just. I, I hesitate. I always hesitate using the word rare, but. I'll say uncommon. I won't say rare. I'll say uncommon, and it generally is. I mean, rarity. I think rarity only applies to things that you see on. Um, things that you see on the, the uh, Antiques Roadshow. Because that's sort of genuine rarity when, you know, but, uh, it makes, you know, a lot of games are uncommon, aren't they? But it's, it's, it's got a certain amount that it's, you know, it's r rarity value, um, uncommonness, scarcity, that's a better, probably a better word, scarcity to it. But it's, it's, there's no great demand for it, but um, I've actually been looking out for the PS2 version of this, but that's only available... On sort of continental import, it was never released in UK. But so I think if you want it, you pretty much need the German version. 
I don't really like having, I've got one or two games sort of that, that are continental imports, but I was half aware that this was released sort of in the UK, but I'd never seen one, never ex expected to see one. I've got the uh, the PS2 version on my saved saved searches on eBay, so and that never yields results. And I think this one's even less common than than the PS2 version. And it's a final sorry um, Samurai Showdown anthology. What it, I got it in my favourite branch of um, cash converters. What it was doing there, I don't know. But it, they came up with trumps again. There was a bit of a lean period after Christmas where they were just had the same old rubbish. And I thought when I went back and when I got this, um, it was the same old rubbish, but then eventually I made my way around to the Wii the uh, the Wii, the Wii shelf. So I don't I don't all, the Wii shelf's not the first place I go to in a shop, it's always like the PS1 shelf. But I made my, my sorry, made my way around to the Wii shelf and lo and behold this was on it and this was um eight ninety nine but there was a 25% off sale and everything, so this was £6.80. Like I said, there's no, great, there's no great demand for this, so it doesn't, you know, all the, the few versions that are on eBay don't sell, so even though they're like brand new and sealed and stuff, but it's got, um, it's got Samurai Showdown 1 to 6 on it, and, and it, it supports, uh, obviously it would support, <laughs> the classic controllers. Doesn't support the GameCube controllers, so I've, I've only got one classic controller. So until up till now, um, two player is is off the agenda. Um, yeah, I'm just chuffed to have it because, like I said, the the PS2 version was definitely on my radar, and I think I'll I'll, I'll cross it off my list now, even though even though I've got the Wii version. Um, a little uh, update. Uh, a good few months ago now, I bought Samurai Showdown 5 on the PS2. Um, TG Apollaeus asked me how good it was, and I said, yeah, it's pretty good, but for some bizarre reason, it doesn't support analog controls. Uh, there's a, I'll have to update that. Um, it, does support <laughs> it does support analog controls. Uh, it's just that I had, at the time when I played it, accidentally flipped the, the switch on my PS2 controller, which turned off analog controls. What a... <laughs> What a twat. <laughs> so, this is a, a side note to TG Apollaeus. Samurai Showdown 5 does, does support analog controls. There you go. That's it. 37 minutes. Bollocks. Um, I won't waste any, of you, any more of your time. Sorry that the light's not been playing games. But it's still not playing games. You see a bit better there. Weirdly. Um, thanks for watching. I hope it's not been too long, too wordy. Um, I've been, I know I've been sort of gabbing on a bit, but um, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for any new subs I've had. I'm not sure I've had many. <laughs> I've plateaued. So I'll let you go. See you a lot later. Um, XCOM. I've been putting it off for my fear of personal failure, but it will get done. It will get conquered. I've not beat a game in a long time. But thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, look out for XCOM for anybody who watches it, which isn't many for anybody. But <laughs> see you later.